In the fourth chapter of James, verse 14, the apostle James said, What is your life? It is but a vapor that appeareth for a short while, and then it will vanish away. Life's constructive pause. Life is both horizontal and vertical. Life comes down from God, and it extends from man to man. God took the dust of the ground and formed man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God said it's not good for man to be alone. He caused a deep sleep to come upon man, took a rib and formed woman. Man and woman were placed in the Garden of Eden. It was their responsibility then to perpetuate life. Life came down from God to Adam and Eve and life must extend from man to man. Life's constructive pause. Life is brief. Life is short. There are two important days or dates in the life of man. The date of his birth and the date of his death. Whatever man accomplishes, whatever he does, must be done between the day of his birth and the day of his death. Life is lived here on earth. We must prepare while living here on earth for the life to come. You recall the Bible talks about the rich man, how that he died and in hell he lift up his eyes. And seeing Lazarus afar in Abraham's bosom, and he wanted Lazarus to come to him, but he was told that thou in thy lifetime, whatever we do, we must do in our lifetime. Life's constructive pause. The word constructive carries a definition which means that this is something that is beneficial to progress. Whatever we do in this life that is beneficial to progress, I'm saying today that it's necessary for us to do it between the day that we are born and the day that we die. Life's constructive pause. Pause means to stop, to wait. If you're plying a mule, it means to woe, I say woe to that mule. Life's constructive pause. The Coca-Cola Bottling Company has a slogan that Coca-Cola is the pause that refreshes. And I recall seeing a sign in Houston, Texas with a small fish swimming downstream and a large fish with an open mouth in preparation to consume the small fish, but the small fish suddenly stopped. And the sign said, it's the pause in life that count. And even in baseball, they have what they call the seventh inning stretch. In this life, we must exercise life's constructive pause. And we need to do it hurriedly. We need to do it now. This is a new year. This is a time to pause and thank God for the life that you've lived, for the number of years that you've lived. Thanking for the blessings which he has so copiously bestowed upon you. Thank him for your children. Thank him for your opportunities. Thank him for your achievements in life. 
pause and thank God for all of the blessings of this life and ask him to give you the opportunity to do greater things in life. Life's constructive pause. We have so many homes that are destroyed because the constructive pause was not exercised. Their wives and husbands being divorced because they do things on impulse. They don't take time to think. They need to pause. I noticed before football plays are placed in operation, the quarterback will huddle with the team they are pausing to call the plays. And when they come up to the line, there's another pause. And then the snap is made. This pause is beneficial to progress. If they want to win the game, they have to pause. Every once in a while, the quarterback or the captain will call for timeout. And he will go over to the bench and talk to the coach. And whatever the coach has to say during that pause is beneficial to the progress of that team. If you want to win the game, take time out. And we need to take time to be holy. We need to be still and know that God is God. Life's constructive pause. We have so many people who are moving around hurriedly during this time of the year. They need to take time out to pause. This is a fast world. We live in a hurry. We die in a hurry. The funerals are conducted in a hurry. And we are buried in a hurry. And we forget about each other in a hurry. This is a fast world. You can leave Japan on Sunday and arrived the next day in America on Saturday. If anyone should ask you, when did you leave? You could truthfully say, I left tomorrow. This is the fast world. We need to take time and pause. Churches are disturbed because of the lack of exercising life's constructive pause. We have people who leave their places of employment just because something comes up suddenly that upsets them and off they go and search for another job when what they need to do is to exercise life's constructive poles. We have people who have been killed because of a lack of exercising life's constructive poles. When you buy property, do you purchase that property without first pausing before you invest? You should investigate. That's exercising life's constructive pause. And may I say to the young people who think that they are in love and they want to get married, but I say to you today that you need to take time out to court that young lady. Take time out and court this young man. Learn about him before you engage in marriage. The courtship is that time that we pause to learn about each other. Life's constructive pause. Some people think that to live the Christian life is a life of constantly running. I know we run when we live the Christian life. Hebrews the 12th chapter verse 1 the Bible says therefore seeing that we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race which is set before us, looking unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. We must run everything that will impede our progress. We must Get rid of that, lay it aside so that we can run. But the same Bible that says run also says walk. Romans the sixth chapter of the Bible says that we are buried with him by baptism. 
like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. When we become Christians, we are new creatures. We are running the race. We are walking in the newness of life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the Bible says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. We run. We walk. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. We fight. And the Bible also says that we wrestle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places. Second Corinthians, the 10th chapter. We run. We walk. We fight. We wrestle. And the same Bible that mentions those says, Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Life's constructive pause. It's all right if we walk provided we walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. All right for us to stand if we stand not in the way of sinners. Before church membership, we must pause. Some people say, well, just join somebody's church. Uh, join the church of your choice. But we have so many choices until we're confused. We don't know which church to join. It's just like old MacDonald's farm. It's a church, church here, and a church, church there. Here, church, there, church, everywhere, church, church. Now, what church? We need to stand. Jeremiah said, Jeremiah the sixth chapter, verse 16, stand in the ways and see. If you notice, he said, stand in the ways and see. He didn't say walk in the ways, but stand in the ways and see. Ask for the old path. Where is the good way and walk therein? And you shall find rest unto your soul. But they say, we will not walk therein. You'll always find some people, even after pausing, who will refuse to walk as God would have them walk. But Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Matthew 7, 13, strive ye in and ran at the straight gate, for straight is the gate. And now is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You have to put forth some effort to find it. But wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction, and many there be that go in there at no difficulty at all, just go in there at. But if you want life, you have to find the right way. Stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old path, and where is the good way, and walk therein. Can two walk together except they agree? If man does not agree with God, man cannot walk with God, and God will not walk with man. I read in the Bible that Enoch walked with God. Why? Because Enoch pleased God. We need to pause and learn the right way. Before becoming a member of any church, pause and see whether it's the one the Bible talks about. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He built this church. It was established on the day of Pentecost in the city of Jerusalem. Zechariah 1, 16, over thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercy and my house shall be built in it. The house of God is his church, 1 Timothy 3, 14 and 15. The apostle Paul said, these things are right unto you, hoping to come unto you shortly. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar of the ground of the truth. The house of God is the church and all of God's children are in his house and in his family. But we need to take time out 
to pause so that we can find it. Learn that there is a difference between religions. There is a difference between uh, that which is right and that which is wrong, righteousness and unrighteousness. There's a difference and we must learn the difference, but we have to pause. We're just moving too fast. I'm driving down the highway sometime and even in the city and there are cars that pass me and they pass at a terrific speed and turn at the next corner. We're just too fast. We need to slow down and take time to be holy. God had people in Egyptian bondage. And while they were in Egyptian bondage, there was a man by the name of Moses that God called and told Moses to go down and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Moses went down there and Pharaoh eventually permitted God's people to go. And after leaving Egypt, Pharaoh decided then that he would pursue them. And God had them to camp and protected them all night long. And the people began to murmur and said, Moses, why didn't you leave us back there in Egypt? Weren't there graves enough back there for us to be buried? Why did you bring us out here to be buried in the wilderness? It would have been better for us to serve Pharaoh than to die out here in the wilderness. But Moses talked with God and God said, why? Are you crying to me? You tell the children of Israel that something is going to happen. And you know what Moses said? Moses said to them to stand still and see the salvation of God, which he shall show you this day. Do what? Stand still. Life's constructive pose. If you want to make it to the promised land, stand still. Hold your peace. If you can do nothing, hold your peace. Why are you murmuring? Hold your peace. Why are you roaring? Hold your peace. Stand still and see the salvation of God, which he will show you this day, not tomorrow, not next month, not next year, but this day. He'll show it to you if you stand still. Life's constructive pause. That which is beneficial to progress, stand still. Like a road under construction, you have to drive carefully until the road has been repaired or completed or finished. And then you can move with rapidity, but at the time of construction, slow down, pause. You stand still. God told Moses, to take the rod to the head and stretch your hand across the water. He did that and God divided the Red Sea. The waters backed up on both sides. God caused this wind to blow all night long and drive the ground. And God told Moses to take the children and go on forward. But don't go forward until you stand still and see the salvation of God. And the Bible says that God saved Israel that day. That day after they had stood still and followed God's direction and had gone through the Red Sea, God saved Israel that day. And as God saved Israel that day, God can save us this day, this year. Don't wait until next year. Don't wait until next month. Do it now. This is a good time to resolve that you will be a Christian and do it. The Bible says in Acts 2, 37, now when they heard this, they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of, this, of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. God can do this. Saving the same day. You know what happened to Pharaoh? Pharaoh drowned and his host in the Red Sea. They were in chariots, and God caused a 
wheels to drag heavily. And when they saw that God was fighting the battle for Israel, they wanted to flee, but they were trapped. The chariot wheels dragged heavily. I remember reading in the eighth chapter of the Acts of the Apostles about a man who was an eunuch who had gone to Jerusalem for the worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah and the gospel preacher Philip was told to go to him and join himself to this chariot. He ran through the to him and the chariot wheels were still rolling. He said, understandest thou what thou readest? The chariot wheels were still rolling. He said, how can I accept some man should guide me? The chariot wheels were still rolling. He desired Philip to come up and sit with him. The chariot wheels were still rolling. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Like a lamb dumb before his share, he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth. And the chariot wheels were still rolling. The eunuch said, I pray thee of whom speak the prophet this? Of himself or some other man? The chariot wheels were still rolling. Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. The chariot wheels were still rolling. The eunuch said, see, here is water. Look at it, there's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? He said, if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest, the chariot wheels were still rolling. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. The chariot wheels stopped rolling. And they went down both into the water. He baptized him. When? After the chariot wheels had stopped rolling. He exercised life's constructive pause. Buried in baptism with our Lord. He's a child of God now. He's been born again, the Bible says. He went on his way rejoicing. Look, the chariot wheels are rolling on now. But they had exercised life's constructive pause. And I say to you today, why not pause? Why not make this your day to become a child of God? Thank him for his Goodness, and the Bible says the goodness of God leadeth unto repentance. We need to repent. But before we repent, believe the gospel of Christ. Repent of our sins. Confess that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then be buried with him in baptism for the remission of your sins. And that baptism will bring you into Christ where you're saved. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.10, if any man be in Christ, or rather salvation is in Christ Jesus. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I hand you all things for the elect's sake that they may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus. You're saved. You're born again. You remember the church of our Lord. It's been a joy talking with you today. Listen to the broadcast of the telecast next Lord's Day morning. It's been a pleasure. I'm Brother S.T.W. Gibbs, Jr., the minister of the Stop Six Church of Christ, along with Brother Joe Darrell Gibbs, the full-time assistant minister.